Hi everybody, welcome back to another dazzling episode of Horror Vision 2020. It is good to be back for vacation and bringing you guys more content and more interviews. We've got a ton of shit coming your way and we are excited about it. Hopefully this pandemic, well if this pandemic does end the world, then we'll be bringing even uh, more interesting uh, interviews, that's for sure. Today we are excited to uh, bring you a guest. He lives in New York, Brooklyn area to be exact. He's an East Coaster, he's awesome. Um, he's an actor, director, writer, producer. Uh, definitely, I'll drop, I'll drop it in the uh, description. But you got to check out his film, The Luring. Fantastic psychological thriller. Very scary, and horrific. His family doesn't even want to talk to him. Well, some of his family was like, "What the f is wrong with you?" Um, we talk about everything coronavirus and how it's affected the world, how it is affecting the film industry, and what we think it's going to look like post pandemic. Um, we talk about all the horror films that. Uh, it, it has scared him as a kid or the ones that inspired him. Um, he is one of those individuals that, you know, he has that energy and that positivity and that creative mind that you just love to talk to, love to listen. He loves life. He loves everything. He is an awesome dude. I can't wait for you guys to uh, to tune in and, and check him out. Uh, you definitely got to keep your eyes on him because he's got a lot of good things coming. Because of the pandemic, he has been working on a lot of animation. I think that's going to be very popular in the future as well, it was before, but even now, because of social distancing, all those damn zombies, so I look forward to you guys following him, definitely check in on his Instagram and, and, and social media, and uh, tune into what he's been up to, so let's get to it, boys, girls, moms, dads, grandmas, grandpas, infants, I do not care, and this is for you, my man. We will share one of these in the near future. I know you are thirsty. Ah. Fantastic, just like Christopher Wells. Oh. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing really good. Good, good, good. Yeah. So, Welcome. This is Christopher and this is James. What's up, my man? Nice to meet you, James. <laughs> nice to meet you. Welcome to Horror Vision 2020. Yep. Nice. So we're going to do an intro for you later. So you'll cut this out or whatever. You know? yep, yep. We'll get all the information, anything you want posted, especially the Amazon link. Sure. And we'll put it on everything to make sure. Okay. Be hopefully a good promo for you. <laughs> yeah, you re- I, I had my uh, film win Best uh, Thriller at your um, at Motor what? Center. Motor, Motor City Horror Nightmares Film Festival. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so I'm. This is really cool to to see you again. That's awesome. <laughs> cool. It's yeah. a great movie though. That's why Thank everyone you. has to see it. The luring. It's yeah. Luring. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I have. A, I have a weird accent too. I always like say luring. I'm like, no, it's luring. I have to remember to say that. <laughs> everyone keeps telling me I have a Michigan accent. I said Michiganders don't have accents. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. We. We were just talking about the Upper Peninsula. They have an accent. Yeah. <laughs> are you, know you from there. Michigan also? Me? You know I'm. Oh. Christopher, are you from Michigan? No, no, I'm not. No, I, that was the first time East. I've ever been. But I have friends that live there or that okay. used to live there. Okay. Yeah. You're on the, are you still on the East Coast or are you out West now? I'm in Brooklyn. Okay. okay. Yeah, I knew, yeah. I, 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 yeah. Nice. Yeah, Hopefully no. uh, everything's safe over there now with the pandemic slowing down. Yeah. Well, I mean, in other states, it's not. I mean, it's rising like crazy. So who, who? California, it's rising a little here. Yeah. Oh, you're in California. Yeah, I live here now. Yeah. Oh, okay. I did not know that. Oh, wow. Big move. <laughs> wow. Okay. Are you still going to be doing the festival? Oh yeah. Okay. Actually, All right. This year it ended up being virtual. The virtual festival will go in July, and okay. then we'll have another one at the rescheduled event in April. Okay. That's good. So let's talk about you. So. What <laughs> started in either horror or filmmaking or both? Like when you were young, what got you started? Well, uh, when I was in high school, I uh, was lucky enough to get into a TV production class that was really advanced. Somehow some millionaire, when he passed away, he, gave, he put his money just into that class. So when I was going to school, I was learning how to use all this types of equipment. Um, and so I was learning how to edit, produce, write, direct, but you know, and we were, we actually had a green screen. It was a blue screen at the time, but it was, you know, same yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, and it was amazing. Um, and then, you know, going to school visual arts that obviously helped 
you know, bring that to another level and haven't stopped. I mean, uh, just continue doing short films, enjoying it. And, you know, I also have clients that I do videos for. It's not the same thing, but at least I learned to take a budget and kind of put it into a video. And so that's a responsibility I think is important to have. That's good. So what do you do? Um, well, I mean, I do videos for different businesses, all sorts of businesses. Um, and, uh, and then take that money and I put it into my own projects. <laughs> you know, just, yeah, there you go. Oh, Smart. hallelujah. I know how that is. <laughs> Yep. Part of the reason we started Motor City Nightmares was so people would see our movies. That was one of the main nice. reasons to start it. <laughs> so, yeah. and it worked out really well, and it became its own animal. So. <laughs> right. Yep, it just froze for a little bit, so I kind of missed the last. Oh, time, I just said that's uh, why I started making. We started Motor City Nightmares because people would come see our movies, they wouldn't have a choice. <laughs> nice. No, that's smart. In between the festival ones, we throw ours in, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but that's great because honestly, you know, your festival, I mean, it, I felt so at home because the people that go there just love horror and, and it's, it's just to be in that environment. So it's smart to show people your films because people would want to see it. So I think that that's, that's not, I, I think that that's a good thing. I think people would want to do that. It's not, like a cheesy thing. I think people, you know. <laughs> other, other than when every VIP package gets my movies, <laughs> that's in yeah. their face. <laughs> hey, you know, again, people. Like to see shameless, it, you know? every... shameless promoter I am. <laughs> and it works. And then it's, it grew like Motor City grew into that beast, you know, it's been what, 12, 12 years now. And it just kind of kept going, going, going. Yep. Yeah, it's amazing. It so, really is a special place. Do you like horror? I love it. Oh my okay. god. I, so I what, mean, <laughs> what what did what were your first forays into horror? I mean, well, just watching it as a kid, just growing up watching I mean, even like uh back in the day in the in the late seventies and early eighties, I mean they were always showing horror films. Always they were showing Dracula, Frankenstein, the mummy, the the blob. I mean, they were nowadays they don't really do that. Then I grew up watching Elvira. Oh, yeah. Um I mean so, so many different shows, uh Tales from the Dark Side. Uh, yeah. So I, it, it actually horror, believe it or not, for me, it, it comforts me. It's something that, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know why, because it, 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 it doesn't make sense, but it, it, it does. I mean, I guess because since I've been watching it since I was such a kid, you know, a little kid, um, I love it. And so when I got the opportunity to shoot The Luring, I wanted to shoot horror because when you're doing very low budget, you can't do a romantic comedy. You, there's there's certain things that you just kind of can't do at least with horror it, it lends itself so if you have a not a lot of money you can still tell a story to an audience that wants to see it no one really wants to watch like a low budget action movie or a low budget uh romantic comedy but horror you can and so you can get right. away with it well the, the main reason why horror was when i when we started what i started was because um the only thing that translates around the world is horror and porn. Yeah. Because <laughs> what's funny here isn't funny in Japan or Germany. Yeah, 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 yeah. in love here, it's not the same as it is there. Mm -hmm. But horror, people are scared of the same thing and sex is sex. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's true. That's great. So I decided no porn. Yeah, yeah. Horror. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if I, <laughs> yeah, wait, 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 that was a little bit. <laughs> Ooh, I got A or B. <laughs> you or can both. B, yeah. you know. <laughs> Just throw some raunchy sex in your movies. I've been part of that. Thank you. I know. <laughs> yes, he is he's a star of a couple of my movies. Oh, and that's great. Yes, he did have sex with a hooker in it. <laughs> she was fantastic, man. <laughs> he was. <laughs> Of course, awesome. and then his mom had to see it at the premiere. <laughs> uh, there, there's nothing he ran worse out for than popcorn right before the scene. <laughs> <laughs> How long was the scene? Was it like significantly oh, like? No, it was no? okay. Ah, no, like it was short. Nothing. Yeah, you know, well, when you get horror, you can't do too much. You know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. True. <laughs> that's all. Awesome. Oh no, that's cool. So, did you write the luring? Yeah, yeah, I wrote it. Uh, basically, what happened is my mom. She had a small cabin in Vermont. She could no longer afford it after when my stepfather passed away. So I asked her if I can shoot a film. I wanted to kind of send the house off in a nice kind of way. And my stepfather was always supportive of my films. And so she said, yes. 
Um, and so I wrote within my, the confines of having that house as a location. Um, and it was probably about like a three month process of writing the film and having a deadline because the house was basically sold when we, right before we went into production. So she told the agent, um, May 17th would be the, the closing date. Like she kind of pushed it back so we would have enough time to shoot. And thank yes. God it worked out. And the house yeah. didn't burn down. It was sold. <laughs> Woo. Right? Yeah. Yeah, oh, it's a big that, deal. That's awesome. So your family yeah. is very supportive of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, they have been. And, and, and I, I want to point out that it was an interesting approach because I couldn't use blood because I didn't want to fuck up the house. Right. And so I then thought, okay, well, if I can't have this like gory film, which I wanted to do at first, um, because the because you know I'm using my mom's house, um, I then decided to write a, a psychological thriller, and I just really wrote what would disturb me and and really kind of fuck with me the most, and what would really be a, like what what I think is a nightmare, and and I just translate that translated that onto a script, and and we shot it, and it's 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 it is disturbing. It's a disturbing film. I I'm getting text messages from my family and friends like, what the fuck's wrong with you? And I'm like, exactly. <laughs> You, you made it. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny. I mean, well, but yeah. For one of my films, I got a couple death threats. So oh. I knew I made it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And I knew those people are going to watch my next movie. So. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> uh, they can type out their 20 minutes of rant, whatever. You know? Yep. Oh, it's funny how hard does that, you know, especially with psychological thrillers that like it can really be offensive to people, but you're you're also making a point you're all i mean and 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 for me i think it's kind of funny how people are okay with slasher films and people getting all bloody and hacked up into pieces but once you start messing with their brain it's like it's a whole other thing because they're not used to that and and i'm kind of finding that i mean even my own family i don't want to call them out they still aren't talking to me because after when they saw the movie they they were offended they, they were so disturbed by it and they're now they're looking at me and i'm like you know it's a movie it's but yeah. Yeah, it's right but if you can get that from people that is amazing yeah. you know what i mean so you're on the right track unfortunately sorry about your family right. <laughs> you know? we thought we knew you man yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah they're not gonna let me babysit anytime soon <laughs> it's probably a good thing though right yeah, i guess <laughs> so how did you end up at wild eye releasing so after when we shot the film, we had a, um, we hired a producer rep, uh, Ryan Levy. And so he shot the film around. He contacted um, all these festivals. You know, we got in, uh, we won an award. Um, and then we, um, then he, then part of the deal was, part of the package deal was that then he was going to approach distribution companies. So he approached a whole bunch of them. And Wild Eye does USA um, distribution. They don't do foreign. Okay. So we were talking to maybe about seven to eight different distributors that were interested in us. But Ryan was like saying, look, you, you want to make sure that your distributor does both domestic and foreign. So we went with Summerhill, who ended up selling the US rights to Wild Eye. So we ended up, because we loved Wild Eye. And we, and, but we, the only reason why we didn't really sign with them exclusively because there would be no distribution company that would, would allow the United States to be, you know, kind of taken off the table. So it's kind of weird, like how it, it kind of ended up because it, we were really sad to let Wild Eye go, but through Summerhill, we went with them and the film has been, you know, it's been released, it's playing in the United States, but it's also playing in other countries and we'll be playing in more countries. So I yeah. guess it was a smart move. To, I'm still learning about this whole process in my first narrative feature so this whole process is still kind of new to me yeah. um but it's, yeah it's interesting how things come you so it never be a, a dick read because... all the contracts really good because i'm going to tell yeah, you yeah. a quick story because um one of my first movies mr jingles got picked up by lionsgate i went mm. through a producer's rep who sold it to a company who then sold it to someone else i went into lionsgate two years later because they have a file on every filmmaker they open it and they're like you should be really happy you got like, it made like $2 million worldwide. And I got $30,000. Mm. So it bought me out flat. The, all of the royalties went to the one company and the producer's rep. Wow. Just read your contracts. 
I don't want to say that's going to happen because it's probably not, but it's just, <laughs> I like to help warn people so they can just make sure that they don't have that same problem. Yeah, no, I remember you- It's a good you... movie, you know, you know, it's a really yeah. good movie. Well, one of the great things about your festival is that you had these round tables and I was able to talk to a lot of filmmakers and that was valuable. And so I, we had a lawyer, one of my producers, co-producers is actually a lawyer, which is great. Yes. But we had an entertainment lawyer also read the contract to make sure. And, you know, I mean, it, it's very new. It's just been released. Um, so we're obviously, we don't want to get screwed over. I don't think we will. Right. Um, but, but it was nice to have a, a lawyer look at the contract and also Ryan also knew who they were. So he had that kind of relationship. So I, I felt good. You, you never feel totally good about doing something brand new because you, you know, you hear all these horror stories, but <laughs> so far it's been I good. quite a few of those, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'm sure. I mean, it's, I mean, you know, it's crazy because a lot of people don't even get to that point. A lot of people, when they make a film, it doesn't even, unfortunately, go anywhere because there could be so many problems and your legal papers aren't all set. And, and, and uh, so this is something that's very unique. So going to your festival was really nice to talk to these people that have done it and to learn from their experiences and at least ask the right questions because that that's I think is really valuable for any filmmaker. Oh, there is it because we just implemented the round tables a few years ago. I'm so glad because we wanted to make it for filmmakers. Yeah. So it's good to hear that it is working. <laughs> it, it, it really is. It, 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 it honestly like it's it's such a great experience because I mean, yeah, it, it, it's it's so valuable. I mean, oh, and Nancy great. Boyd says hello. Oh, Nancy, great. She's, a, she's at USC now. She's yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, she's, she's doing good. She's doing yeah, good. I follow her on Instagram and I actually reached out to her. I have to reach out to her again. It's been like a while. Um, she well, today's was, her birthday. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Well, now I have a reason. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so, awesome. but the, yeah. The, okay, go ahead. Finish your story. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, I, well, no, I was just going to say earlier before, like, you know, it's, it's, it's always important not to be a jerk to people because when we were talking to Wild Eye, you know, we, we politely said, you know, we're going to go with someone else and we gave them the reasons and they were, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that they were like crying about it or anything like that, but it was, you know, they were disappointed. And, and so. It's awesome. They were disappointed because they wanted it. Yeah. Yeah. That's and what's, that's an honor. you know. <laughs> yeah. No, I felt really grateful for having that reaction from them. And, and uh, so, you know, I just think it's just important. Another thing for filmmakers is to, it, it's a very small business and, and, it was, it, it's always good to be just nice with everyone, polite, professional, because I've also heard nightmares from people that don't want to work with other people, filmmakers, because they're a nightmare to work with. And, and that's, that's, and I've worked on films as an actor that I'm like, okay, I don't ever want to work with that director ever again. So I think it really, it's so important. That's, that's something that they don't necessarily teach you. It's something that you just have to kind of know. Yeah. Um, because the industry is so small. It's right. so small. It's right. just people don't realize that. People don't realize that at all. It's funny when you go to the film market here, you see so many people that you know all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's really cool. Do you, yeah. do you have like anything on deck that you want to shoot or have a plan to shoot, whether after coronavirus or anything like that? Well, it's, it's crazy because with the virus, it's, it's obviously making a lot of limits for filmmakers to move forward. So I have a script that I'm working on now that's a horror comedy. It's, it's um, kind of like an, like an Elvira-ish type of flavor to it. Um, but with all the things that are happening, I'm, not that I'm putting that in the back burner because I'm not, I'm still writing it, but I'm, I'm also working on an animation. And the cool thing about animation is that you, the virus is not affecting that at all. So right. getting a voiceover, getting an animator, I already have an animator, but you know, getting all those people, my editor, people to do, you know, to do the score, yeah. like, like I don't have to worry about anything because we don't know how long this is gonna last. And more importantly, I don't know exactly what, because it's not clear what SAG is gonna do with the actors. Like they're kind of implementing rules and regulations, but it's, it's not clear. And so right. there's a lot of mystery going on. So I think right now animation, I, I think we're gonna maybe see a little bit of an uptick in that because it's people need to work and all these actors are going to want to do at least voiceovers. And you know, yep. it, so, yeah. That's the one thing we do know is we interviewed an animator yesterday. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, he's still working. He's working, yeah. for, but he's worked, you know, for DreamWorks, ILM, everyone like that. Mm -hmm. so it was 
really cool so yeah we are going to see some more <laughs> yeah yeah like even it, like you mentioned the union for sag and stuff and like the rules and regulations that they're throwing out there is like how can you even shoot a movie obvious obviously it's going to evolve into what we'll know it as in a, a year from now but yeah like right now because was i i don't know who i was talking with but the days of our lives had to shut down because they couldn't you can't even shoot a tv show yeah because they were for love scenes, well, they were using I, uh, blow up dolls. Yeah, they, they actually they actually had to hire <laughs> couples that were actually married to yeah. shoot any holding hand scenes. Or and it's oh like, my gosh, the <laughs> actors have to be six. They're like, we we we're done. We have to cancel shooting until there's a more clear path to what we're gonna do on an actual set from here forward, here on forward. Yeah, so. it's scary. It's I mean, and, and if you look at like TV, like Saturday Night Live, like like you know they're doing a live show and they're using, you know, webcams to tell their stories. And so the, you know, with creative people, they're always going to figure out a way to do it. So right. I think it's going to be interesting to kind of see <laughs> the films that come out at, you know during this pandemic and 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 what people are doing to sort of you know create their stories. And and so yeah. that I'm 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 interested. But obviously, I don't want the coronavirus to last. Well, I want it to be over with, but yeah, everyone does. Yeah. Everyone does. Yeah. I'm ready to go work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm ready to go to a bar also. I mean, <laughs> yes, return, see people. <laughs> yep, talk to people. I mean, it's but, uh, hold on, I'm still suffering from going to the bar two days ago. And I've told Tommy, we yeah, went to the I'm bar. I'm really single, so I want to go somewhere. <laughs> you know? we, we went, to, it was the first bar I've gone to since this whole thing. I mean, LA is a lot different than New York, obviously, but. Um, we did way too many tequila shots, and I'm like, I'm, I'm not in my 20s anymore. And I'm like, I told Tommy yesterday, I'm like, oh, you have no idea, I'm such a hot mess. Now jump another day ahead, and I should be better, right? No, because no. I feel like this. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Nothing's worse than a hangover. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm old enough to know it. that I shouldn't be doing that. You should be old enough to know. <laughs> It was fun though. I couldn't believe I it. it was like <laughs> people watching. It was glorious because I was like, look at all these people having a good time. <laughs> this is so anyway. No. Sorry. No, side um, note. If you no, it's great side are note. you if you write scripts for other people too? Uh I I haven't, but I've directed films that I didn't write. Right. Um because I think ultimately I'm a I'm a director and I write because I want to direct. Yeah. And it's very hard to, you know, let go of my baby because I, I really visualize it when I'm writing and I'm visualizing it as a director. That's how so, I do it. Yeah. <laughs> I know so exactly. It's, it's hard. Yeah. Like David Lynch does that. Quentin Tarantino does that, you know, because they yeah. tend to do it. But I was just going to tell you because one of our sponsors is inktip.com and they, you, you just put your script up there and people buy it. Oh, wow. You know, so it's just like, I bought scripts from there. Uh, Born of Earth, I bought from there. You know, he's been in a couple of my movies. <laughs> um, so, you know, if it's extra money or anything, I just wanted to throw that in there for you. Yeah, no. Anything tip, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's, that's interesting. I mean, that's... Uh, yeah, just check it out, because even if you might even find something on there, you never know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because uh, I'm, I'm very open. I, I did a film called Trunk Space. It was a short film. I did this years ago, right when I was out of college. A friend of mine wrote this really funny, messed up, kind of like a horror, funny film, you know, horror comedy. And I thought the script was great. And it was so much fun working with someone else because I was so used to writing my own stuff. Right. Um, and I mean, obviously in class, you're working on other projects, but it's in class, but you know, this is outside of school and, and it was really a great experience. And, and I, I, I would love to do that because obviously writing is, is, a, is a chore of its own. It's, it's a whole, you know, you really kind of have to get into these characters in a different kind of way. It's nice to kind of look at it with a fresh perspective from a director's point of view and kind of put your own spin on it. Just like when you give a script to an actor and they do the same thing, you're like, holy shit, that was great that they came up with that. Like, I didn't see that. So it's, Kind of nice to one rule with that do not let the writer on the set. <laughs> well, they will be like, No, 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 that's not what I saw. <laughs> yeah, well, with this film that I did with him, Trunk Space, he was also the executive producer, so we didn't, we couldn't oh, avoid well, it. I don't have a choice, right? <laughs> yeah. You gotta make right. me happy. I know how that yeah. is, too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but I think you know, with good planning, with good shot listing and storyboarding, I mean, 
uh, you know, the writer should be taken care of. I think, it, you know, just like with anything, like when you, when you hire a cast, they should understand the crux of what you're trying to say and what these right. characters are. And, and if they don't, then, you know, obviously you won't, you won't cast them. I think with, with writers, if they're going to hire a director, there has to be that immediate, okay, we're on the same page. And can you elevate it? Because the whole process, as you guys know, it's elevating it because from the script to the screen are two totally different right. films. Right. The script, so, you write, the script you shoot and the script you edit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it's totally, I yep. mean, it's, it's, I love the process. It's, it's so too. good. That's why I was, I I was going to say the same thing. And that's why we're doing it because yeah. we love it. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It's what you call what is special kind of stupid. Yeah. Yeah. So, because we someone keep doing once it. told me his name is Gary Jones. He told me, he goes, this business chooses you. You don't choose it. And you just can't stop. <laughs> no, you can't. It's like a drug that you just I can't stop like taking. It is like a drug. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And, and, and even if you screw up and even if you don't do it correctly or let's say, you know, people are don't like what you do, you, you can't stop. You're like, all right, fine. I'm going to learn from it and I'm going to move forward. forward. That's why you, you can't have an ego because right. it's, you're, you're not going to survive if you have an ego. You, you're doing it because you can't not do it. Right. And, and, I, and I, that's why I love filmmakers. That's why I love living in Brooklyn because I get to, to talk to other filmmakers and people that are really into it and hear their perspectives and, and, and their stories. And so it, it, it's fun. It's, it's a lot of fun to talk about that, which, you know, it's the best topic, I think. Yes, of course it is. <laughs> <You know? laughs> awesome. Yeah, that's kind of why we started this whole thing because yeah. we can talk all the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we actually started this before the pandemic we were going to do a virtual one. And it was going to be a paid thing and everyone was going to join all over the world. And then the pandemic hit and we thought, let's just give it away. Let's just do this and get everybody just to start talking everyone across the board. So we have, you know, new filmmakers. We have other like Lloyd Kaufman did it. And, you know, uh, Richard Brake. We have a whole bunch of people that are doing stuff. And then our volunteers for Motor City Nightmares. You know? so wow. it's like, yeah. Because everyone's got a story. Yeah. 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 Everyone. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and, and, and those think, stories are the best because they're they're so usually insane you know they're like what the fuck <laughs> like, like, exactly i mean like it's like for for us we shot for 22 days and it rained 15 consecutive days and i mean we took off every five to six days but i i mean my ad came up to me he's like and he's like looking at some sort of app that he had on his phone he's like i've never seen it rain consist consistently for so many days 15 consecutive days of rain I, it, where are you like it was in vermont during mud season and like it was insane and we never ever went over budget we never went out of the schedule like he was a master at that and having That's someone a good AD. That's good. yeah yeah i mean it was holy shit i mean i i still can't believe that i mean and you know of course having the rain is is and having the clouds come in it it, it creates different challenges and you get these like little windows of time to shoot uh, there's a there's a scene in our film where uh, we have this uh, long dolly shot of the two characters at a lake, and uh, we had like maybe 15 minutes to get the shot. And I told the actors, I said, I don't want to put any pressure on you, but we might only have one take. <laughs> they <laughs> and they got it in one take. It, I mean, and the take that you see in the movie is the take that they did. They they were so good, so uh, well trained. I mean, that's why I think. I mean, obviously, non-SAG non actors are great, too. But I, I, I just wanted to make sure that my actors remembered their lines. And God forbid, if when you're working on a low-budget film, you never, what, you never know what curveballs are going to be thrown. So I just want to at least not have the curveball of having my actor not know their lines. That, that, and, and that never happened, thank God. And yeah. uh, it was... Well, it that's was, why, like me and like other directors, they like to use the same actors over and over again. Yep. Sometimes even write roles with the name in it. <laughs> yep. He's in it a couple of my movies. <laughs> we wrote his name, Jimmy. In it. <laughs> yeah, it's because you know it's a it's a you know it's a security blanket. You 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 just the last thing you're you're trying to like create a, an environment that there's no Murphy's law. And right. so if you have that, you know, because like, you know Murphy's law is going to show up somehow. It always will. But so if you can at least like you know help push it to the side and make it harder for Murphy's law to to show up on set, that's. Right. You know, I mean, I mean, 15 days of rain, like, what the fuck, Murphy? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> You're like, come what on, man. Your sound? Was, that, was it a nightmare for the sound? Thank God it wasn't. I, I, I don't know how it wasn't. I, I, I'm not, and because when it would rain, it would like downpour, and somehow it never was a problem in terms of the rain. 
I mean, in terms of the sound. Um, good. I don't know how we did it. I, I, you know, I look back at it, even just raising the money, I, I don't even know how we did it in such a short period of time. And it just, everything just kind of fell into place. And, and even like when we would hire people to do something and then we realized they just kind of flaked out, they just weren't into it or whatever, we somehow, you know, pushed forward. And, and uh, you know, this filmmaking is, is, is a test of your perseverance. I mean, it's just, yes, it, is. <laughs> it, it takes a certain kind of dedication. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Right, kind of stupid. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, part of the reason I'm out here is because I don't really have a lot of skills from Michigan. So mm -hmm. I came out here after, you know, trouble at home. And now I'm here. And it is amazing how many doors have been opened just being here. And nice. you're right in New York, you're in a hotbed too. So it's perfect. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. It's a different, I think it's a different flavor. I think uh, it's more Hollywood out there, right? I mean, more like bigger productions or yeah. Or how do you feel? Is it is there low budget films? There, being made? Yeah, there's a yeah, lot, and the beauty of it is, um, it is a small business. So almost all the horror people I know here from our shows, I've flown them out, or they come to my show. So uh, people all making movies, the smaller ones, I'm able to like do a bunch of stuff with them, and then some of the other ones that are not quite studio, but they need help, you know, with production and stuff, and. I, I've been getting pretty lucky, you know? That's great. <laughs> and I, I think like like what you were comparing, like, cause New York has a totally, you know, has a totally different vibe than LA. And I feel like there's probably a lot more guerrilla filmmaking style, like in on the East coast than here, but like we're, mm -hmm. I'm getting ready to do a movie in like August and we're shooting at non-union because mm -hmm. we pretty much can't shoot it union right now. Yeah, yeah, if we yeah. shot a union, we uh, you'd have, five people on set and you know and you have to sit and so like we're like well we have it let's shoot it let's do it you know old school like how we made movies in the young days oh, yeah how we made movies in michigan <laughs> how we make movies in michigan <laughs> just like hurry up and get the shot before the cops go and do, well, you have, you know, do you have your student id tell them it's a student <laughs> film <laughs> it's a student yeah. film yeah but that's the best because when i went to i went to school of visual arts in the 90s and that's when brothers mcmullen was coming out uh slacker clerks and and those right kind of movies i love those, those are the kind of movies that i think we need more of because now what hollywood's done is that they've capitalized on this oh people want to watch these little bunch of movies we'll do that but we'll just put 10 million dollars we'll call them independent and it's like yeah. wait a minute like when i was going to school independent meant low budget now it means you know i don't even know what the hell it means but I don't mean so i mean i th i think it's great that people are doing that kind of thing that you're saying yeah. because i i personally love that like you know the movie pie and all these other, even like a lot of foreign films still kind of have that kind of way of filmmaking. And like, yep. uh, there's a film called Dogtooth that I really like. Um, th th you know, th these are like, you know, low budget films that I, that I, that I personally like. And, 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 I'll, and I know a lot of people like, and thank God for the horror community because they, they're very supportive and, and they seek out those low budget kind of films, which is yep. a lot easier to make. And I think there's an energy to it that Hollywood just can't capture. Because right. if you have too many people on set doing everything and, and you're only wearing one hat, it, 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 then you can, you know, yeah, that's a, that's a fantasy. It's great to kind of, you know, have that. But there's an energy when you're wearing all these different hats, when the director is all, all, also cleaning the floor afterwards. And like, you, you know, like it's, it's yeah. just, it just makes, <laughs> I think, for a better film. Yeah, well, yeah. we know every position. I know yeah. the studio people have no idea what this department does, what that department does. They just, yep. you know. So. I love it. I love it when I go out on the sets, like from all the stuff we did, you know, with you, obviously in Michigan. Actually, you wouldn't let me, but then I go on like these bigger sets out here, and they're like, "Hey, hey, 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 what are you doing? You don't? No, that's not your job. That's not your job." I'm like, "Oh, I'm sorry." I, yeah. I, I was just trying to help. Okay. Yeah. Let me move the apple box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. I know it's almost like automatic, and like you got to stop yourself. You know, it's like, oh, yep. okay, yeah. Yep. <laughs> so that's cool. Well, thank you so much for all your time. Is there yeah. anything else you'd like to promote before we go? No, I mean, I, I, I just think, you know, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that people get a chance to see The Luring. I'm, I'm really grateful uh, for the opportunity. I, when, when I got the list of platforms that it's playing on, I was like, holy shit. I didn't even know that Xbox shows movies. I'm oh, like, Xbox? So cool. Yeah, and I was like, holy shit. But, um, but you know, if, they wanna, if people want to learn more about the film, they can go to theluring.com. 
um, and they can check out all like the platforms that it's playing on. But Amazon's probably the biggest platform. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and it's also YouTube movies, which I didn't even know that YouTube, you can rent movies from YouTube. I didn't either. No. But, <laughs> yeah, yep. they, they can, you know, and, yep. and Google Play. My, my producer said, yeah, I just watched our movie on Google Play. I'm like, Google what? And the, so, awesome, though. That yeah. is awesome. Yeah, yeah. We'll, yes. we'll blast it. Like, I'll, when we post, like, the thing, it'll... It'll be everywhere. It'll probably won't. This probably won't be done for a couple of weeks, just so you know. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> but, you know, we're we're gonna be around for a while, so yeah, that's right. Sure. We'll pump, hopefully, you know? yeah, we'll we'll pump it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's and awesome. I'll tag I'll tag you and stuff on the Instagram side. I'm sure Tommy will tell you I'll when she you when she it. posts it. So like, they're it's fun. fun. We have a lot of fun with them. So like, yeah, it's good. Yeah. Oh, that's so great. We'll, yeah, and if you and if you'd like, uh, let's revisit again. You know, like in August or something. A couple months from now, like you can tell us, like, "Hey, man, the movie's just still killing it. We love it. It's great." Yeah. And if we there's like anything to else you're working on, people like and talk to them after. So, in a couple yep. months, we'll give you a call and see if you want to come back on. You know, sorry, it, it just it froze for another ten seconds. I didn't oh. hear that. <laughs> sorry about that. In the next couple months, if you want to come back on, either to promote stuff or to promote this again. Fuck yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, my God, <laughs> I'd, I'd be great. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so indebted to you, you know, being at your festival. I mean, honestly, it was such a great experience. I mean, it, I'm not even just talking about winning. I'm just talking about just the experience. I've, I've never had anything like that. That was really, I learned so much. It really was great. It That's really. What I wanted to do. I didn't know that it was working. Thank you for telling yeah, me. Yeah, it is. And and I met some lifelong friends, you know, there. It, it's 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 such a special moment in my life. So I'm awesome. so happy to be here. Awesome. Yeah. awesome. So next year, April 23rd through 25th, if you want to come up <laughs> or come down okay. from Vermont, right? <laughs> okay. That'd be very cool. <laughs> come over. Right. Come over. It's like, you know. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Christopher. Yeah. Yeah. We'll yeah, man. Thank awesome. So much, guys. I look forward to the next round. Yep. Me too. Me too. Take Thank care. you again, guys. Really yep. appreciate it. Okay. Thank you.